this lesson, we'll learn the basics of the grease pencil tool. Let's begin. The time has come to learn grease pencil. Grease pencil is an incredibly powerful tool that allows you to effortlessly add detail to your renders by drawing on them directly in the world. Grease pencil differs from texture painting, if you're familiar with that, by creating actual objects within the world made entirely of pen strokes. It doesn't require a model to be unwrapped and then painted onto, as it's not a texture-based tool. In simple terms, we're drawing on objects, or in the air, to create physical pen strokes in the world. While we learn the basics of grease pencil in this lesson, we won't be focusing on creating actual details in our render, just simple doodles as examples. We simply want to learn the different tools that we have access to and how to use them within the world. The following lessons will focus on creating real details for the render, such as hanging wires or cracks on the walls. To begin with, we're going to head over to the layout workspace if you're not there already. So currently I'm in the layout workspace, but if you're not, you can go up here and click on this tab. Depending on the type of details that you're drawing, you might be drawing in the left camera viewport, or you might prefer to draw in the perspective viewport here on the right. I'll explain as we go when you would want to change your view based on the type of details that you're drawing. For now, let's start by drawing in the left camera viewport found over here. With that being said though, make sure that your left viewport is actually seeing the camera view. If you don't see this exact view, you should click this little camera icon here to jump into the camera view. Our first step is to create the grease pencil object within our scene. Before we create the object though, let's go over here to the outliner list on the right, and then we're going to click on this little white folder icon next to this word grease pencil. This will make this grease pencil collection the active collection, ensuring that any new object that we create will automatically be placed within this collection. And these collections serve basically just as folders, as ways to organize your file a little bit better. Okay, so now we're ready to create our grease pencil object. So we're just gonna go over here and either of these viewports, it doesn't matter. Hit Shift and A to bring up the add menu. And then we'll go down here to grease pencil and then we're gonna choose blank. And now with our new grease pencil object still selected, we're gonna go up to the top and we're gonna click in our middle mouse button to pan this bar over so that we can see this menu here called object mode. We're gonna click this and then switch to draw mode. It doesn't matter which viewport that you access this menu in, but either way, when you look for this menu, you'll likely need to click in your middle mouse button to pan it over so that you can see this drop down. Now we can see a whole bunch of different brush options found down here at the bottom of each of these viewports. Each of these brush options produces a different kind of stroke, but for this class, we'll be using the one called Ink Pen Rough. Your file will likely have defaulted to this choice as that's how I set up the starter file, but if it didn't, we're looking for this brush option. So it's the one with a really thin line and then it really gets thick here at the end. And we can tell we have it selected because it has a blue square around it. But as I mentioned before, each of these pens just have a different look and you can kind of get a preview of what they look like based on this preview icon. So we'll be using the Ink Pen Rough for this class. The Ink Pen Rough brush has a slightly rough texture that reminds me a lot of a fountain pen on textured paper. This works really well for a manga style render. Okay, so we're just about ready to start drawing. First we'll need to choose how Blender is going to place our drawings within the scene though. There are a few different ways to do this, but for this class we'll be using just two of them. We'll be using either Surface Mode or 3D Cursor Mode. We can change which mode that it's using based on this drop down found here. Currently it's set to Surface but we also have the option here for 3D cursor. Yours will already be likely set to the surface mode, but if it's not, select this from the dropdown found here. So let's leave it on surface for now. The surface mode allows us to draw directly onto the surface of an object, just like the name implies. That means if we click and drag on this wall over here in this left viewport, we can see that as we draw, we're just leaving a line directly placed on this wall. If we look over here in the right viewport and spin around, we can see that this line has been placed directly on the surface. So it's not floating out in space, it's been kind of snapped to the surface here. Now over here on the left side, if we zoom in a little bit, we can decide to draw on a different surface though. So if we want to draw on the top of this step here, we could zoom in a bit so we can see a little better, and then just click and drag and draw another shape here, and we'll see that it's now attached to this surface instead of this wall. We can notice that over here as well. So on the right side, we'll notice that it's now applied to the top of this step. Surface mode is super useful for drawing things like cracks on the walls or writing words such as graffiti or signs. So if we wanted to have some graffiti written on this wall, we could just write it directly here. One quick thing you might have noticed already is this line here is a lot more jagged than when I wrote the word hello over here. And that's because I was zoomed in a lot closer when I was doing this. So the stroke is a lot smoother. So that is one thing to keep in mind. If you're drawing a line and you're really zoomed out, you can see here it looks relatively smooth. If I draw another line here, but when I zoom in, it's really jagged. But if I drew this same exact shape much closer, you can see the line is much smoother. So that's just something you want to keep in mind when drawing. 
There is one more thing to keep in mind when using this surface mode though. If your lines transition between different faces at different locations, the lines will stretch and snap to the new surfaces regardless of how far away they are. As a quick example of this, let's draw a line across the floating stairs on the right side. So in this left viewport, we're going to zoom out a bit, and then we're just going to draw a line that travels between each of these steps, as if it's a wire or a railing going between them. So we'll just start here and just start drawing a line and just make sure that you hit different surfaces and different faces along the way. So from this view, this line looks relatively straight. It looks like it's all kind of right in the same plane. However, if we look over here on the right side, we can see that this line actually snaps back and forth and attaches to the wall, and then it jumps back out and attaches to the side of the step, and then goes back to the wall. So while it looks relatively fine in a camera view, in the perspective view, it's pretty obvious that there's an issue with this line. If you never plan on adjusting the camera angle by having more than one view or animating its movement, this isn't technically a problem as it looks relatively normal from the camera view. However, this looks pretty weird from any other view as we can see here. This is the main downside of the surface mode, but it can be easily avoided by knowing where the edges of your model are and only using this for lines that don't change surface depths, like these stairs. So this would work perfectly fine if we decided to only draw on this side of the step. We can see here that it attaches directly to the step and there's no issues. Before we explain the next drawing mode, you're probably thinking, how do I change the thickness of these lines? And why does the cursor not match the size of the line that I'm drawing? This is a great question. First, the easy question. You can change the size of the pen by adjusting the radius value found here at the top of the screen. So if you increase this radius, it'll make it larger. If you make it smaller, it'll make the line smaller. This radius is showing the real world size of this line, meaning that if we type in 0 0.03, which is what it was set to before, this line is actually 0 0.03 in radius. So its actual size in this real world would be 0 0.06 for the diameter. This helps when making things like your wires. So if you know you want a specific thickness for the wire, you want to set your radius to match that. There's also a quick keybind for changing the radius without having to go up here and mess with this slider. You can simply hit the bracket keys on your keyboard found roughly above and to the left of the enter key. So if you hit the right bracket, it'll make it larger, and if you hit the left bracket, it'll make it smaller. This is good when you're just making small adjustments while you're drawing, and you want it to be a little thicker, and then you can hit the left bracket and then make it a little thinner, and just adjust on the fly. For now, I'm going to go back to a 0 0.03 for my radius. So now the second question. The reason your cursor and line thickness don't match is because of an advanced setting called radius unit. We can find these settings up here on the right side. We're going to have to pan this bar over using our middle mouse button. And then here we'll find advanced. We can twirl this open and we can see right now our radius unit is set to scene instead of view. The default for this setting is scene, which means that it's determining the thickness of our line based on its real world size in the scene. The other option is view. This setting instead uses a pixel size based on the screen from your current view. The benefit of the view mode, however, is that your cursor and the size of the stroke on the screen will remain the same. Let's explore this difference quickly. First, we're going to switch to the view mode here underneath the radius settings. And then we'll notice over here that our radius is no longer set to meters and instead is set to pixels. So we're going to adjust this radius and set it to three pixels. Now, if we go over here to the left side and we zoom into an open area, we'll notice that as we draw, the line is roughly the same size as this cursor, which is a benefit of this mode. And now for the main downside of this view-based stroke. Let's zoom in our camera here so that we can see a little bit closer, and then try drawing that exact same shape. So we're just going to draw this same shape, sort of a squiggle shape again. And we'll notice that we didn't change anything about this radius, however this line is significantly thinner. And if we zoom in further and do a similar shape, we'll notice that this line is even thinner than this one. This is because the view-based radius only cares about its pixel size at the time of drawing. That means as long as it's three pixels wide when you drew the line, it doesn't care how far you zoomed in or out when you drew it. This interaction can be useful for drawing small details on your image, but it can also be a little frustrating when you're trying to draw and get a consistent line thickness for the drawing. Because as you zoom in and out to see more and less of your image, we draw out here, this line is way thicker than it was before, and I haven't changed anything about this radius. We'll be using both the view and the scene radius modes for this class, but it's important to know what they're doing and why they're doing it. Before we end the class, let's discuss the last drawing mode called 3D Cursor. First, we're going to go back over here to the advanced settings and then switch it back to scene. Then we can adjust our radius and set it back to 0 0.03 and then hit enter. Now let's go up to this drop down just above radius and we're going to switch from surface to 3D Cursor instead. 
the 3D cursor mode allows us to draw on a plane and space of our choosing based on the location of the 3D cursor within our scene. After placing the 3D cursor, we'll also need to determine which direction these lines will be facing using the drop down menu directly to the right of this 3D cursor drop down. We can find that over here. So currently it's set to front, but we also have options for side and top. For now, let's switch ours to side. So we're gonna choose side YZ. Okay, so how do we place our 3D cursor? We're going to be doing this portion of the lesson over here in the right viewport. Let's zoom out a bit. Then we're going to go over here to one of these columns. Now we can hold shift on our keyboard and then right click on any surface of this column. In this case, let's click on this front side here. So the side closest to this large gap. After holding shift and right clicking on this surface, we'll now see that our 3D cursor has moved. This plus sign with the circle with red and white portions on it shows where our 3D cursor is. And now that we've moved our cursor, we're ready to draw. So for this example, let's draw some simple wires between these two columns. So let's zoom in our view a little bit and then rotate around. And we're just going to be drawing a wire from here to here. So we're just going to click and drag and then just start drawing a wire over here. And after drawing this wire, we can rotate our camera a little bit. And notice that this line doesn't have the same issue that it did down here on the stairs. And that's because we're using this 3D cursor mode. We've told Blender to only draw this line based on the plane of wherever this 3D cursor is placed. So it won't allow it to snap back in space or go forward. It can only draw on this surface, regardless of whether it's in the air or on a model. If we hold shift and right click and place our 3D cursor somewhere else, say maybe the side of this pipe, we can now draw back here. Maybe we'll just draw some lines back here hanging off the side of this pipe. This allows us to have a lot of control on exactly where these lines appear, and it prevents that stretching and snapping that we saw earlier with the surface mode. It does, however, come at the cost of being a much more manual process, and it doesn't work well for curved surfaces like this large pipe, as we see. So here it's sticking into the pipe, and then down here it's hanging off the side of the pipe. It's not actually following the curvature of the pipe. So in general, this works better for flat surfaces. We do have one more thing that we can control with this mode, and it's the drawing plane direction. So we'll remember before, we set this to side, but if we switch this to front instead, we can then change the direction that these lines are flowing. So in this exact same example here, I won't move this 3D cursor at all, but now when I draw, these lines are projecting from the pipe rather than trying to go along the surface of it. That's because I've switched this mode. So now any line that I draw here is going to be along the front surface, and then if I want to switch it back, I could go back to side and then draw some lines over here. And now you can see that these lines are now going this direction along the length of the pipe. So if we switch back to front and then we move our 3D cursor back to this side of the column here, we can hold shift, right click to place it on this side of the column instead. Now we could draw some wires that extend across the gap rather than running from column to column can see that here. So now we have a sort of an L shape for these wires. Being able to swap these directions for front and side will allow us to have a lot of control over where these lines exist within the world. You might have noticed that as you were drawing these long wires, it was kind of hard to create a smooth line, especially if you're drawing with a mouse. Worry not, however. I have a tool that will make drawing smooth lines a lot easier, and I'll teach you that very soon. In the next lesson, we'll use Grease Pencil to add wires to our render. I'll see you there.